Here lies the Golden Real. Today we are at Roundout Creek in Kingston, New York on the Hudson River. Roundout is where the Dutch established a trading house and for centuries this has been a trading hub for the local tribes. This Esopus River connected the Delaware River to the Hudson River and from the Hudson River to Housatonic and on to Long Island Sound. This was the silk routes of the wampum trade. The Dutch being great traders were quick to pick up on this trade. This is the central point in New Netherlands heritage. And when we first arrived many years ago from Amsterdam to Amsterdam, there wasn't too much I had been in touch with about this heritage. Blessing or curse, I'm not sure of. With history, you slip down this slope. Since I got involved, why not share some of it with you? When Peter Stuyvesant arrived, he felt like he could not defend this round out area from the Esopus Indians. He directed the local settlers uptown to a stockade district which he called Viltwijk. That was yesterday, but today here we have the development of Roundout Creek, one of the best successful waterfronts on the Hudson today, 20 years from dilapidated to social hub. From this Roundout area, we will be heading up river to the small village of Athens, New York. On our way from Amsterdam, Netherlands to Amsterdam, New York, we come upon this old ferry slip on the Hudson River, and here lies the Golden Real. Here you can see the river at low tide. There is a four to five foot tide on the river, and when the wind blows from the north to south hard, you can be dead out of the water. My name is Richard Manick, and I'm the owner and skipper aboard the Golden Real, and I'll be your host. This vessel here is a Dutch sailing barge that was built at the turn of the century. She's carried four different names and been through two world wars and has quite a history of her own. And with the Golden Real, we will be traveling up this Hudson River and showing you some of the early secrets of the Dutch natural heritage to this area. Right now, we're presently located in an old ferry slip in Athens, New York. It's across from Hudson. Athens itself was incorporated in 1805 and is a combination of two villages, the village of Estrepanaza and Lunenburg, or Van Loans. And these old homes, these natural homes to this area are still intact. And what we're going to do is take you into town and show you some of these early homes give you an idea of their relationship to this community and its relationship to the river itself. We're going to go back with the old New Netherlands maps and we're going to research where we would be right now. We're going to take you to the old homes that are around here and we're going to be traveling uh, along the same routes that Adrian Block, the original navigator who first charted these rivers, and we'll be following these routes. We'll be heading into various festivals that will be taking place along the river. It's been a very colorful summer for us and we want to share that summer with you. folks at the home of Albertus Van Loons. The Van Loon family itself has a rich natural history to the Hudson River Valley. Their presence has been here since the early 1600s. And this whole village, this whole village itself would have been, time, been one farm. And as we approach it from, from the north, this would have been the first home coming into this farm. As we approach it from the south, we'll be upon another Van Loon house. These early American homes would have been trading houses. They would have naturally set up some sort of gardens or food preparation for their own, but primarily they would have been used by the fur trade. And these indigenous people to the area, the local Indians to the area, would have been trading with these families. There's a very rich natural history in this particular home. Viewing from the backyard of the Albertus Van Loan House is the Hudson River. 
This location would have been ideal for river traffic trading, but many of the earliest trader homes would more than likely be built further inland, away from potential cannon fire from hostile ocean-going vessels. The Dutch would be in competition for this valuable fur trade. At the time this home was built, the Dutch Anglo War was over. Now the back of the Van Loon home today is all wood, and this more than likely was not natural. It would have been a small stone wooden superstructure to the home itself, and probably just a sim small dwelling, and more than likely this is a second or even third generation home that was built at this present location. Traveling from Catskill to the village of Athens, the first home we come upon is the Jan van Loon home, built in 1706. This location is near an old Indian trading camp. This was the first dwelling at what would become the village of Lunenburg. The Indians from this area would have traveled across the river at this point, which is a very low, shallow area. As we can see, there is a lighthouse marking a shawl, which is similar to a sandbar. This, this would have been a natural fort or river crossing point for the local Indians. For centuries, many of them would have congregated here along the Hudson River. This area would have been home grounds for ceremonies of the Mohiacan, Algonquin, and Delaware Indians. They would have traveled long distances to get here. The Van Loan House was built in close proximity to the Ford and Indian camp. The Van Loan House we see today is most likely a second or even third generation home. There would have been very simple dwellings that would have been built when first contact was made between Native Americans and Europeans. Now when you were a kid you said that all around this spot, all around this hole, there was a path that would led all around the circle. Yeah, right here. Yeah. yeah. And this would have been used uh, as a lookout. It, you know, being high and the view of the river like that probably was. You know, especially if they had a if they had a cave underneath this. Right. Folks, what it is, is we're on Black Rock at this point. Now this would have been extremely sacred to the Indians of the early era. They came for miles around, all the way up from the Delaware, all the way over from the Pequots and the Narragansetts. This was a very, very important ceremonial spot to the Indians. And in here we have a deep gully today. And this is what remains of this spot, Black Rock. Okay, now to the map of the New Netherlands. This map has been, been our ship's chart while we are traveling with the Golden Real. The New Netherlands map is one of the oldest detailed maps in America, dating back to the early 1650s. Visser's view. Here we see there are three main rivers of the New Netherlands. The Hudson, or River Maartijs, given by the Dutch, also called North River. The Connecticut, or Vars River, given the name by Adrian Block, and the Delaware River, or South River. These rivers were interconnected by two other rivers, the Housatonic, or Rodenburg, and the Mohawk. The area where we're now presently located in Athens, New York, from Athens, New York, up to Albany, would be known as the Hudson Highlands. And as we look at this map now, we see two small houses. What we're going to be doing is taking you to these locations of these small houses. One of them, more than likely, would have been the uh, Catskill house itself, or the Catskill farm, and the other would be the Van Oden farm. Uh, their early farms would have dated back to the early 1600s. Dutchman's Landing was a transit point for Dutch traders. Here the larger ocean-going ships would have anchored. Although further north at Fort Orange or Bay River Vike, there would have been a larger community of settlers. But the Hudson River further north was difficult to navigate, so smaller vessels would transport cargo to and from this keel to what would become Albany of today. Many small trading settlements sprang up along this route, Koksaki, 
Quimen, and Kinderhoek, to name a few. Hapano's Indian Village was located next to Dutchman's Landing of today. Here at the mouth of the estuary, there would have been more than likely a trading house. This location is a few miles downriver from the fort at Black Rock. The Hapanos and many other sister tribes would have spoken the Mohegan language. The river was called Mohayakan for the waters that were never still. Those who dwelt upon it were known as the Mohayakans or Mohegans. Leaving Catskill and traveling to the village of Koksaki along the old roads, we come upon the Catskill farm. Here we can see the house of Gerrit van Bergen built in 1729 and a barn built by Marcia Gerrit van Bergen in 1680. Also the site of an old Indian village. When we look to the New Netherlands map, we find a much older title to this area, the land of the Catskills. This map is in the Library of Congress and is dated to 1687 by Visser. The map maker was deceased in 1652 and is more than likely an overview from resident map maker Adrian van der Dunk from 1648. This map unlocks many secrets to this area. When we look upon the map, we have a view into New Amsterdam or today's New York in its infancy. Here we find two figures on either side. At first sight, you would believe the right side figure to be a Native American, but on closer observation, you will see no feathers in his hair. Also, to the left, the woman figure, although bonneted and skirt, that she is bare-breasted like Native Indians of the land. To me, I believe that like the Dutch in the other parts of the world, for trading purposes, the Dutch would assimilate to the local identities, much different from other Europeans that would follow. Further down this Catterskeel Road, we come upon the site of the old Dutch church. These reformed churches are located throughout the many communities of the Hudson and Mohawk River valleys, and they have been with us before the Mayflower arrived at Plymouth Rock. On July 22nd, 1620, the entire congregation of the old church of Delfshaven assembled to wish our Pilgrim Fathers a good journey to the New World after 14 years of living in Holland. The entire Dutch congregation knelt and offered prayer for a safe passage to the New World. And after a volley from the crew and a cannon salute, the Spedwell, the Pilgrim's first ship, weighed anchor and sailed down the River Moss. In Southampton, the group was joined by other pilgrims from England and transferred to the Mayflower. The Reformed Church was with them from the beginning. The Hudson, or America's River, still holds many secrets, and the Dutch presence and their contributions are just one. Our New Netherlands map dates back to 1648, and this was a very monumental year for the Dutch. After 80 years of war, the Seven Provinces was to finally become the Netherlands and the Republic for which it stands. Their Declaration of Independence begins in 1568 with the Union of Utrecht, almost word for word the same as America's Bill of Rights. Their contributions to liberty and talents in American history goes largely unnoticed. The patroon system of 1629 from Dutchess County was the first example of individual rights and liberties to this land to this day. Nu in deze boord wij hebben veel onder thuis, ook de brand thuis en ook de twemen thuis en veel anders. Maar wij hebben niet tijd genoeg. Wij willen nu waren met de Gouden Reel op de heel mooie Hudson Rivier. As you can see, traveling around here only a short distance from the Golden Reel, this local area is filled with Dutch footsteps of the past. Now heading down Main Street here in Athens, you would come upon an old unused ferry slip that connected Athens to Hudson, New York. And on the other side of the river, the ferry is no longer in service since the Rip Van Rinkle Bridge was built. 
But Athens itself has a long natural nautical past with shipbuilding as one of its industries. Hudson on the other side of the river was an old Dutch whaling port. And from here, we will be traveling upriver, the Hudson Highlands to the locals. The summer Mid-Hudson River Valley Festival was now over. It lasted for 10 days and included many local Mid-Hudson River communities in preparation for the 09 400 year Hudson River Centennial. The Golden Real was on display here for the first annual affair. The Real seemed to fit right in. The town, park, and people. It felt now like Athens was home on the Hudson. We would be heading to the annual tugboat regatta that was about to begin upriver in Waterford, New York. Many of the water world folks along the river spoke highly about it. Hey, tugboats and barges, almost the same group, We'll just invite ourselves in. The trip would take us along many of the small towns and marinas along the river. The homes and landscape on the Hudson River are what dream vacations are made of. As we look at our New Netherlands map, we see that the Hudson and the Mohawk Rivers meet at this location. This is what is known as Waterford. Waterford was an early Dutch trading post community that was established as early as 1624. Here you can see that the two rivers meet and was a crossing point for Indians and Indian villages and Dutch in this area. Captain Bart Drake put the wheelhouse high, so if we were pushing up the canal. The Waterford Tugboat Festival is one of the most successful annual events on the canal and rivers, drawing old tugboats and their crews to the enjoyment of over 40,000 people for these special four days. The Golden Real for her first visit was extremely well received. The crowd was very curious about this type of 100 year old Dutch sailing barge. And after so many years of working on her, every compliment was well taken. We tried to explain as much as possible as to what these barges were and about to the thousands of visitors that would come aboard. For now, we will let you enjoy the festive atmosphere with music and fireworks. Where these fireworks are set off from is called People's Island. This island has been for centuries a very important Indian village and trading area. Waterford and the Tugboat Festival, thanks for the memories. The time now has arrived for our final leg of our journey from Amsterdam, Netherlands to Amsterdam, New York. The Golden Real will be heading up the historic Erie Barge Canal system for this final leg. America's first river highway. Waterford is the start of the canal system and its heritage has been a long mainstay of the community. From here we will be navigating six locks that will take us up over 180 feet or 60 meters where we will enter upon the Mohawk River. Our next stop would be Schenectady, in New York, the historic stockade district for their annual walkabout historic open house tours. We will be landing at Gateway Park. This historic location was where many of the wagon trains that would travel across America would gather for their journey across America, hence Gateway Park. Schenectady has long been an early Dutch trading community 
and we will be setting up our New Netherlands Museum Ship Exhibit, highlighting this era and opening our vessel to the public. The Golden Real will be sharing this location with other small historic era vessels and their crews. Here at Gateway Park, where we have been setting up our New Netherlands exhibit, this location is at the Binnen Keel, where it flows into the Mohawk River. Binnen in Dutch means beginning of. Keel is a stream. This stream would have taken you into the stockade, the old center of this community. Today in this neighborhood, commonly known as a stockade, is the Yates House, the oldest of many in this historic stockade district. Schenectady and Kingston, New York are old Dutch stockade trading societies, one of America's best kept secrets. These districts have splendid homes and architecture to have gone largely unnoticed. For this weekend of walkabout, the public is welcome into many of these splendid homes and gardens for personal viewing. You can enjoy their hospitality of this reconstruction revival. Many of these river or canal communities are going through a waterfront revival to the testament of so many ethnic groups and distinctive cultures that have left their mark on this area of America that is second to none in its natural heritage. From the stockade to Gateway Park, here we see the Golden Real as night falls upon us. The mass lighting was a warm sight for the locals. Well, Schenectady, Thanks for welcoming the Golden Real into your community. Now on our way up river to Amsterdam on the Mohawk River, we come upon an area called Rotterdam Junction. Here, the most significant Native American event in New Netherlands history takes place, a battle between the Mohawks and the Mohegans. This war was to change the trade balance and relationship between the Iroquois and Algonquin nation tribes and their Dutch traders. Before Henry Hudson ever sailed up the Hudson River with the Half Moon, there was friction between these nation tribes. In 1607, on the south end of Lake Champlain, the French explorer Champlain had first used firearms in a battle between these two groups. He and a few musket men joined the Algonquins in a fight against the Mohawks. These firearms helped defeat the Mohawks in this battle. Here we show you a map of the territories of these two Indian nation groups. The Iroquois alliance is in red and the Algonquin alliance is in green. They were distinctively different languages belonging to each group. This battle was to take place in no man's land between these two groups. The battle was won by the Mohawks and allies over the Mohegans and their allies. The Dutch were in no position to influence the outcome of this event. They had to adjust their trading policies to suit the Mohawks who would push the Mohegans from their territorial land. This was yesterday's New Netherlands history, but for now, the Real will be heading into Lock 10, the last lock before we enter into Amsterdam. After so many years of this odyssey, it seemed like it never would be fulfilled. Here we are at the gates of Amsterdam on the Mohawk. The Golden Real remained at Lock 10 for several days. Plans were made with the Amsterdam Waterfront Foundation Group. They had arranged a press party that was to greet us. Newspapers, radio, local officials, and the public. But no matter what you could tell them, how could they ever understand what I went through getting the Golden Real to this moment? This Amsterdam River Link Park development has connected this city to their river waterfront and is the most accommodating and attractive riverfront development along the Mohawk River. To many of the boats that travel the Erie Barge Canal, it's a welcome stop. Here there are weekly entertainment events that take place to the enjoyment of the Amsterdam local community. Much of this planning and work has been done with a strong volunteer effort from civic groups and private individuals. Hats off to them for they have created a truly entertaining waterfront area and also I would like to thank the many people who came aboard the Golden Real and lent support for our visit and the friendly folks of Amsterdam.
We hope in the future to work on a much stronger unity theme and on the next visit, really lighting up their waterfront. Well, Amsterdam, like I say to an old friend, it's not goodbye, but until we meet again, we just can't let it end this way. It's been a truly amazing voyage. Thank all of you for coming along on this trip with us and the crew and everyone else that's helped us this year with the Golden Real. We hope in the future to be able to develop this type of entertainment, this type of programming, and we thank the local public access channels for allowing us to come into your home.